for your own soul's sake. See, that's why the Bible is redundant. The Lord says things over and over because we are stiff-necked, hard-headed people. Okay. There are always seven people to the Lord that God. Why? Because we keep the law that said the Lord. That's the law. We live together our people. We live together the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. Calm down and listen to one another. And more importantly, listen to this bite. Right? Okay, watch this. So in this last day, the mass high is raising up the true prophets of God. So like we just read, we are Israel united in Christ. And why we are here is because we are looking for the solutions to the problems in our communities. We have reached out several times to Pastor Carter, Dr. Carter, to, to have a sit down and speak. We would like to do that today. And what we're looking for, like I said, is the solutions to the problems in our communities. So we listened to the sermon today. Uh, Dr. McGuire, it sounded great. It sounded really good. All the things he said, we agree with a lot of them. But there's one fundamental thing that we are not doing that's missing in our church. Okay? Give me the book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. Because we have to do something. We are all looking for salvation. Read. 1 John. Chapter 2 and verse 6. Uh -huh. He that saith he abideth in him. So we are saying that Christ abideth in us and that we abide in Christ. Right? Go ahead. He that saith he abideth in him uh -huh. ought himself also to walk even as he walked. So if we say that we abide in Christ and Christ abides in us, then we have to walk as Christ walked. Right? So, what was Christ's walk? How did Christ walk? A hey, sister right here, Officer Nick, what are you teaching the sister right here? Teach her how to get the kingdom. Matthew Bring it out. Matthew 19, chapter 16. Chapter 19, verse 16. So, what, we, what we're what here to teach our people is how to get the kingdom of heaven. Our people have a zeal of God, which it says in Romans 10. Our people have a zeal of God. We love God. It says, but it's not according to the knowledge of the scriptures. So, it's very simple how we get the kingdom. We're going to read it straight out the Bible. Read. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. Uh -huh. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So, sister, I'm sure that's the same thing you're looking for. That's what we're looking for. We're all looking for eternal life, right? So, a young man came to Christ and he asked him that question. How do I get eternal life? Let's see what Christ said. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? So Christ said, why are you calling me good? Go ahead. There is none good but one. So Christ gave all praise to the Father. He says only one good. Watch what he says. That is God. That is God. Which shows you Christ is not God the Father. Christ is God the Son. Right? Go ahead. But if thou wilt enter into life. If you want to enter into life, everlasting life, the kingdom of heaven, do what? Keep the commandments. We got to keep the commandments. So that's not what's being taught in church. We're not learning to keep the commandments. We're learning that the commandments are done away with and that we're under the, old, under the new covenant and not the old covenant. But the fundamental difference and the misconnection or what's not being brought out is that the only difference between the old covenant and the new covenant is what? What's the difference? Do you know? Animal sacrifice. Meaning, under the old covenant, what do we do to atone for our sins? We sacrificed an animal, right? But when Christ came, he became our atonement. He became our sacrifice, correct? Give me John 129. He became our sacrifice. So, under the old covenant, we sacrificed animals. Under the new covenant, Christ is our sacrifice. Watch this. 
John chapter 1, verse 29. Uh -huh. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of, sin of the world. Now that sounds like it's talking about everybody, right? Sounds like it's saying the whole world. But who is the world that's being referred to? Bring it out. Give me Isaiah 45 and 17. See, this is what we have to understand. This Bible is very specific, and it's written for a specific people. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 17. Uh -huh. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. So it says Israel, or the Israelites, shall be saved in the Lord, right? With an everlasting salvation. Everlasting salvation. That's that everlasting life from us keeping the commandments and the faith in Christ. Read. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. Uh huh. Watch this, sis. World without end. So the Israelites are the world without end. That's that right. everlasting world that's going to go on forever at the return of Christ. If we're keeping the commandments and the faith in Jesus. You understand that? So it's not talking about all the different nations. Give me that in Matthew 15, 24. Let me show you who Christ came for. It's very specific. So we have to understand who we are. We are those lost sheep. Read. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. Uh -huh. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Christ said, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, we don't know that we're those lost sheep because we were disconnected. Our heritage was, dis our heritage was disconnected through slavery. Okay? So when we went into slavery, we knew at the very beginning we knew who we were. But when we came out, and this is going all the way back, this is not even talking about the transatlantic slave trade, because there were many slaveries before that. You remember the first the first slavery was where? For the children of Israel. It was Egypt. Right? Then after Egypt it was Assyria. Then we had other captivities. We had a Babylonian captivity. We had a, uh, a, um, a, a Greek captivity, a Persian captivity, a Roman captivity. When Christ was walking the earth, who was ruling? It was the Romans, right? So Christ said, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Those that were scattered around the earth through slavery, he's coming back to save us. Okay? But in, in order for that to happen, we have to know who we are. We have to know that we are those lost sheep, right? Give me, Ma give me uh, Matthew 18 and 11. Watch this. It's going to say the same thing. Now, if you read an NIV Bible, this verse is missing. They literally just took it out. They don't want you to know this. Read. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 11. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. It said the Son of Man came to save that which was lost. The people that lost their name. They now call themselves black. Black is just a color. Right. It's not a nationality. Right. They call themselves colored. They call themselves Negroes. Right. They call themselves African-American, Afro-American. Think about it. It's one, we talk about one people. Why do we have all these different nationalities? Right. We talk about one people. That's because we lost our true nationality of being the Israelites when we were scattered through slavery. Now, why did, were we scattered in slavery? Why did we go into slavery? Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Watch this. And this is how we know that we're the people of the book. Before you get that, I love what um, was it uh, 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 Dr. Um, Dr. McGuire, where he was bringing out Second, second Corinthians. Give me Second Corinthians four. Bring it out. Give me, now, remember what it just said? It said that uh, um, he came to save that which was lost. He came to save the lost sheep. Now, watch what it, what it says about the gospel. Give me 2 Corinthians. Give me 2 and verse 4. See, if he started in verse um, 7. Start in verse 2. Read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 uh -huh. and verse 2. two. Uh -huh. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. So we have to be careful because some people handle the word of God deceitfully. Okay? Meaning that they're teaching out of the book. 
but they're not teaching the correct doctrine. Okay? When you read Proverbs 4 and 2, it says that the doctrine of the Bible is God's laws. Okay? Read on. But by manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience and the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid. Now watch this, sister. It says, but if our gospel be hid, who is it hid from? It is hid to them that are lost. Said the gospel has been hidden to those that are lost. Meaning what? Those lost sheep of the house of Israel. They lost their heritage. They lost their name. They lost their God. That's why today we do things like we celebrate Christmas. We celebrate Christmas. Christ wasn't born on December 25th. Everybody knows that now. We celebrate Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the celebration of the slaughter of the Native American Indians. Those are God's chosen people also. This is not a black thing. Right. When you look at this sign, it shows you who the children of Israel are. Right. There's 12 tribes to the nation of Israel. Blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, Haitians, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Dominicans, Guatemalans, American Indians, Seminoles, Colombia to Uruguay, Mexicans, Argentinians. There's a remnant scattered around the whole world. And the pastor brought out the Great Commission. Matthew's, uh, what, 20, 1928. When he said, go throughout, uh, go throughout the world teaching and baptizing in the name of Jesus. Why did he say, go out and teach all nations? I'm going to show you why he said, go teach all nations. Give me Deuteronomy 4 and 27. He said that because the Israelites were scattered in all nations. Right? right. right? Remember, he said, I'm a, he's going to, watch this, read. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. So the Lord would scatter the Israelites among all nations. We're still scattered among those nations today. Right. But we don't know we're Israelites. We call ourselves stuff like colored and Negro, right. African-American, right. Afro-American. These are not our names. That's right. Africa's named after a Caucasian man named Leo Scipio Africanus. Right. America's named after Amerigo Vespucci. The scriptures say that my people suffer from, a, are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Today, the knowledge is available. The second part of that scripture says, because thou hast rejected knowledge. So when our people come out and they hear this word of God coming out, and then they, they don't want to hear it, they just hop in their cars and leave, okay? They're rejecting the knowledge, okay? The scriptures tell you to be ready to hear every godly discourse. Meaning that if men are coming out of the Bible, you're supposed to come over and you reason with those men. Right. Just like you're standing here listening, that's all we've tried to do. We've sent email after email. We have been emailing this church since right. 2019. Bring it right. 2019. We got read receipts showing that they've read the emails, but they won't respond. All we're asking for is to come in, sit down with the pastor, and go through the scriptures right. so that we can show them what we know and then maybe they can show us what they know. And we can go back and forth about the scriptures and we can get it right. This is not a, we just want, this is not a, 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 an attack. This is, we are men that love our people, we love the community, and we want to bring the solution to our community. We understand that the problem in Baltimore City and every other city where blacks and Hispanics dwell is because of one problem, sin. That's why he said, if you want to get the kingdom of heaven, you have to do what? Keep the commandments. That's the that's commandments right. are not being taught. Give me Exodus 20 and verse 8. Bring it up. Give me Exodus 20 verse 8. Well, everybody knows these, these are the Ten Commandments. These are the basics. Right. There's more than ten. I can see that you love the Lord. I can tell that you were raised in a different time. Because of one thing. Just because you have a modest dress on. Right. Our sisters today, the younger sisters, they don't even know that. They don't know that that's the law of God. You understand? Read that. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. So he said, remember the Sabbath day. We know that's the holy day set apart by God, right? Remember the Sabbath day. Go ahead. To keep it holy. Holy literally means separate. It also means clean, right? To keep that day clean and keep it separate from all other days. Read. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So we have six days to work and to make our money, right? Guess what the first day of the week is, do you know? Look at any calendar, what's the first day of the week? Huh? Sunday, right? So he says six days we have to labor and do all our work. 
Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Read on. But the seventh day. But the seventh day. Saturday, read. Is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. That's the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So it's little things that have been changed. Now, Shiloh, New Shiloh Baptist has been around since 1902. In 1902, we were, we were what? 40 years out of slavery? So the doctrine that was being taught then was the doctrine that was taught to us when? In slavery. Right. We are still learning that same doctrine today. That's when we learned Sunday church. That's when we learned Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving. We learned it's okay that you can eat anything. Okay? The Bible don't say that. The Bible gives us a dietary law. Remember when we said that the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament was animal sacrifice? Well, guess what? That means that all the other laws and commandments are still in effect. That's right. That means that Christ, that in the Old Testament, said you're not supposed to eat pork. Right. You're not supposed to eat crab, right. shrimp, lobster. Right. Christ didn't die so we could eat pork. Right. He died for he died for the nation of Israel and gave us a chance of repentance that we can learn His commandments, keep them, so when He comes back, He would save us. He's not going to save those that are not being obedient. Right? That's why he said, why call me Lord, Lord, but you're not doing what I told you to do. Right? He says, he goes, what did he say after that? Get away from me. I never knew you. He only knows us if we're keeping the commandments. Give me that first John 5 and 3. Because we say we love God, but it's a way that we have to love him. He told us, he gave us instructions on how to love him. Read. First John chapter 5 verse 3. Uh -huh. For this is the love of God. Since it says, this is the love of God. This is how you love God. How? That we keep his commandments. So when we keep his commandments, we show that we love them. It's just like if you have children and you tell your children to do something. And, and number one, love, it also goes right hand in hand with respect. So you tell your kids, look, when you come home from school, I want you to clean your room, do the dishes, take out the trash. Now you come home. None of that's done. But they like, Ma, I love you and, and want and want you to give them things. What they gonna what you gonna give them is a butt whooping. What you gonna give them is a punishment. Right. That's the same thing God given us because he gave us instructions. We didn't follow the instructions, and now we're praying and asking God for things. And he's like, Oh, well, I got something for you. One of the things he had for us was slavery. Watch this, watch this. I'm gonna show you something, sis. What let me I'm gonna I'm gonna describe I'm gonna show you Baltimore City. And everything that's going on right here in the scriptures. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Bring Watch this. Watch this. Deuteronomy. Oh, so have, a, have a seat. Just open the window. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass. Meaning it's going to happen in the future. Right? This is a future prophecy. It said it shall come to pass. Go ahead. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. He said, God said, if we don't listen to his voice, his voice is this Bible. His voice is the prophet speaking, coming out of this Bible and giving the instruction. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the Bible said, hey, sis, the Bible said, God said, if we don't do his commandments, right? It says that curses would come upon us and overtake us. Now, we're going to read some of this curse. Remember, Moses is talking to the Israelites. So we're going to read some of these curses, and we're going to figure out if that fits us today. Verse 16. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. So he said the Israelites would be cursed in all the cities that they dwell in, meaning in those cities you would have high crime rates. You would have uh, 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 sisters getting abortions. You would have single parent households. You would have a terrible school system. You'd have rape. You'd have murder. You'd have drugs. All these things. That's being cursed in the city. It said, and cursed in the field. Meaning, when we were in slavery, that was a curse from God. We were cursed. In Maryland, the cash crop was um, tobacco. So here we were cursed in the tobacco fields. Down south, it was the cotton fields. In the islands, it was sugarcane plantations. Right? So that's cursed in the city, cursed in the field. Who is that talking about? It ain't those people that was that's over there living in Israel today. It's talking about the people that's here, that was brought here in slavery. It's plain. 
Jump down to verse uh, 32. Watch this. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. It says our sons and daughters will be given to another people. We know in slavery, my own grandparents, my own grandparents were kidnapped off a plantation, separated, brother and sister, okay? Taken from Virginia and taken down south to Alabama, okay? They were, on, they were given to other people. They would sell our kids on slave auction blocks. This is history, right? Even today, even today, if, 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 a, if a parent is deemed unfit, CPS, Child Protect, Protective Services, can come take those children. It's nothing that the parents can do. So it says our sons and daughters would be given to other people. That's happened to us. Give me verse 45. No, matter of fact, give me 37. Watch this. So these are the curses that came on the Israelites for breaking God's commandment. It goes all the way from verse 15 to verse 68. 68 is, it brings it all the way home, though. It, it, it lets you know it's not talking about nobody but us. Watch this real quick. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. It says the Israelites would become an astonishment. When you see something astonishing, you know what that is? When I was a kid, we didn't have all them tattoos. I'm 50. We didn't have, I didn't see people with all those tattoos and stuff like that in our community. That was white biker gang stuff. Right. That's who did that. Right. Okay? We learned that from the other nations. Now, we covered in tattoos, men walking around with their pants sagging, okay? Women have dress showing everything. That's an astonishment when you see somebody covered head to toe in tattoos with green and blue and pink hair. That's astonishing. An astonishment is our brothers standing on the corners selling drugs to our own people, killing our own people. That's astonishing. Read on. And thou shalt become an astonishment. A proverb and a byword. A proverb and a byword, meaning that other nations have sayings for us. You know, like 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 um, black men don't like to work or take care of their kids. These are things that they say. Okay, they say black men are lazy. That's not true. That's a byword in the other nations. It's a, a proverb of the other nations. It says in a byword. A byword is when somebody calls you anything outside your God-given name. They don't call you Israelite. They call you Afro-American. Right. They call you black. They call you Negro. That's the God, that ain't in the Bible. God didn't call you that in the Bible. God called you the children of Israel. That's, That's right. right. Jump down to verse 68. No, that 45, 45. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee. Why? Till thou be destroyed, uh -huh. because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So it says all these things are happening because we won't keep the commandments. We refuse. We rebellious children. Read. To keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. Uh -huh. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. So it says we won't keep the commandments so the curses will be on us for a sign. I know this is New Shallow Baptist Church because there's a sign out front with the name on it. Right. So a sign tells you what something is. So these curses serve as a sign in these days to show you who the children of Israel are. When you read these curses, you be like, man, that happened to us. Man, that happened to us. That happened to us. And then you look in history books and go, well, the people that's in the land, none of this happened to them. Watch this. Verse 68. This is going to bring it all the way home. Verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So we had just came out of Egypt. He said, but the Lord's going to bring you into Egypt again. Egypt has a meaning. The word Egypt has a meaning. Let's get what the word Egypt means. Give me that. Go ahead. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt was known as the house of bondage or the house of slavery. So he said, I'm going to bring you into slavery again. Watch this. He's going to tell us how. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Bring us into slavery again. With ships. With ships. How did black people get from the west coast of Africa to America? On ships. Cargo slave ships. He said, I'm going to scatter you throughout the earth on cargo slave ships. That happened to us. Only us. That's how we know that we're the children of Israel. Right. Now, what do we have to do in order to get back in God's good graces? Because we know all these things are happening for breaking the commandments. Give me that next. Acts 3. Repent. 
Give me that. And this is what we're here to teach our people. We've learned wrong, but we're carrying on these traditions. Hold that real quick. Give me, um, what's that, Matthew 15 and 3? Give me Matthew 15 and 3. We've learned traditions. Like, like it says in Romans 10 and 2, it says, My people have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Meaning, I know that they're searching for me and that they want to love me, but they don't know how because we have pastors that have scattered and destroyed the flock through their own miseducation. Read. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 3. Uh -huh. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God? By your tradition. So he asked, he said, why do we keep breaking God's laws through our tradition? Meaning I gave you holidays to keep. Why do you keep, why do you go to church on Sunday and I told you sat, the seventh day Saturday? Why are you doing that? You're doing it because of tradition. You're doing it because as a child, that's what you were brought up learning. That's why we do it. That's why we celebrate Christmas. That's why we celebrate birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day. But all those things to God are idolatry. Right. Why? Because we're serving. You know that Christmas actually comes from it comes from a, 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 um, about ancient Babylon, from Nimrod. Nimrod, that's what represents the tree. And then you got Tammuz was the son. He was supposed to be born on uh, December 25th. That's where all of that originates from. Okay, that's what that goes back to. When you read Jeremiah 10, it tells us that we're not supposed to do that. It describes Christmas and tells us that we're not supposed to do that, that that's a heathen practice. Right? Where were we at? Go ahead. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. So like I said, we're here to provide the solutions. This is the solution. Read. Repent ye therefore, and be converted. So it says we have to repent. What does repent mean? What does repent mean? Give me that in Ezekiel 18 and 30. What does repent mean? We have to repent. We have to repent. That's the first thing that Jesus said when he started teaching. He said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Read. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 30. Uh -huh. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, uh -huh. saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So to repent means to turn yourself from your transgression. Repent means to come out of your sin and come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of God. That's what repent means. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 